Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ian is a Weirdo. So today, um, I hope you all know by now that I don't shy away from um, serious topics and um, I did want to talk about um, this month. So this month, uh, September, is Suicide Prevention Month or Suicide Awareness Month. Um, and I've, I've written a couple notes, so if I look like off screen, that's what it is, um, just because I want to make sure that I'm conveying some points that um, kind of popped in my head as I was planning this video and um, what I wanted to say, um, most of it will be, you know, un, uh, scripted, unprompted, um, talking about my own experience just a little bit, um, not to uh, take away the significance of it for literally anyone else, but just to um, to show that, uh, that it can affect anybody and um, it's something that um, uh, affects the community at large and the community meaning every single person, not just a single, um, a single community, um, but all of us. And so, um, so I guess I, I wanted to say, um, unfortunately, um, many of us are touched, whether it be ourselves or, um, whether it be someone we know, um, through this topic, I apologize for lighting, um, my, uh, window lets light in. That's what windows do. Um, but many of us are connected to this topic, um, whether it is um, through suicidal thoughts, um, attempts, or completions. And it is something that is truly heartbreaking that um, that connects so many of us. And I really wish, you know, side note, I love that we're connected as human beings and the human experience, but I wish that we didn't have this connection. I wish this, this is one that I totally wish that we didn't have. Um, and depression and the other experiences that we go through um, that can lead a person to these thoughts, to these actions, um, you know, probably, I like um, often make us feel alone and um, othered and um, just isolated. And um, in those deepest, darkest moments, I think it's so easy for us to forget that we do have a community, that we are part of a greater community, um, whether that's through family, through friends, um, through uh, through um, sub communities um, like um, the queer community or a religious community or whatever, um, or sh even strangers. I mean, I have have received some of the the most comfort just through people who just didn't know me but wanted to lend an ear and um it's amazing that even strangers can care about your well-being um so those feelings of isolation that are pretty common threads throughout the stories that we hear um time and time again unfortunately um that that feeling of isolation if we focus on that a little bit and make um, people feel like they are a part of the community, that they can talk to us, that we will listen, we will not judge them. Uh, you know, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but not, um, not letting people feel like they're so alone um, in this experience that is life, and life is crazy. And um, there's so many factors that can lead up to these things and, um, whether you um, are dealing with these emotions yourself or you are um, uh, seeing someone else go through these thoughts and feelings, I think it's important to know that there are resources out there. Um, some of them are paid, you know, there are therapists, there are, um, you know, different uh, paid resources, um, uh, whether inpatient or outpatient that can help people get through these really trying times. Because sometimes these feelings are very short in how deep and dark they can be, and sometimes they last longer. And so there are different um, avenues there, but there's often a lot of community resources um, here in the United States. I know we have the suicide hotline, um, we have 988, which you can call or text, um, and um, or you can do an online chat with suicide hotline. and. Um, Sometimes those are the people that we have to rely on when it feels like there's just nobody else. 
And um, I can say confidently that I have used many of these resources, um, including the hotline, um, to get me through harder moments, like um, where I didn't know how I was going to get through it. And um, I'm very thankful for these resources for existing. And um, I think that, uh, you know, this is a really challenging month for a lot of people who have lost um, friends and family um, to um, the tragedy that is the suicide. Um, and for those of us who have gotten very close um, or have had thoughts, it's a, a very bitter reminder that um, times aren't always easy and we don't always feel like we can get through them. Um, so I, I guess, uh, you know, I think that if we look and um, kind of take the moments where we are a little bit more stable and build up our resources, because when you're at your worst, like you just really can't like, you, it's so hard. I don't want to say you can't, but it's so hard to like get outside of yourself and think, okay, I can totally get through this. Um, and so if when we're not feeling that way, but we know we have a high potential for, for feeling that way, um, building up those resources so that we feel like we can um, go uh, and, <clears throat> and use them whenever we do feel that way is a big deal, um, does make a big difference, and is something that is important that we remember. I think um, that there are people that um, are more quiet um, in their suffering, and um, unfortunately, it's so much harder for for um, people around them to recognize the signs. Um, and the thing is, unfortunately, the signs aren't always the same from person to person. And I think that the best thing that we can do is just try to talk and listen to these people. If you notice a friend, family member, stranger, like, you know, maybe kind of something about them has shifted and they don't feel as comfortable kind of um, relaxing into a place of uh, you know, feeling, um, I'm trying to find the proper way to say it, but if you start, start to notice a change within someone that you feel like could be, um, could be them kind of going down this kind of depressive path, maybe um, talk to them and, and let them know that you're a safe place for them to go to and, you know, that you love them and, and you want to um, just be there for them. Now, I can't speak to every relationship. I can't speak to every, uh, I can't speak to every single interaction that we have as humans. You know, sometimes the person that you are trying to reach out to truly does not want your help and, um, or any help. And that can be sad, it can be frustrating, it can be heartbreaking, um, but that doesn't mean that um, it makes us want to give up trying any less. And um, I really hope that this month can bring to light some of the resources that are available for people um, because sometimes the people in our lives we're not as comfortable talking to about these subjects and unfortunately that's the truth of the matter um no matter the situation um and sometimes we are more comfortable but then we we receive a lot of uh, backlash and um we don't know how to do or like we don't know how to um how to express ourselves in a way um or, you know, get the response that feels right. You know, I've, I've tried to communicate to some people that I was feeling really down, I was feeling really depressed, or I maybe even was feeling suicidal. And I've had people who were like, just go out and take a walk, just go out and not be sad. And it was like, well, that was the worst thing that I could have possibly heard because I just couldn't, I couldn't have done that at the time. So if you are one of those people who, who tends to say something like that, well, maybe um, brushing up on some of your um, techniques, if you've 
tried something before, you tried to say something like that before, and you've seen that someone didn't react well, well, don't keep saying it, you know, and expecting different results. Maybe you talk to someone and say, how can I support this person the best? This is what I did, and they kind of shrugged it off, or they, um, they're not able to just brush off these feelings as easily as I am, you know? You know, it's so easy to be like, well, I can brush off these feelings easily. Why can't this person? But I think that that's a, a big note is that um, just because you can get through an emotion, a heavy emotion, easier than other people doesn't mean that their way of processing emotions is, um, is uh, you know, not valid. And so learning how to listen and um, help people rather than trying to like put a band-aid on it is a really big um, thing. So uh, rather than trying to talk and give solutions, I think listening is always going to be a bigger, um, a bigger change and um, a bigger impact on average. But it's still something that I would say um, people may face over their time, uh, over their lifetime, you know, some people more than others, um, obviously people who are diagnosed and, or undiagnosed mentally ill um, are more susceptible to um, these types of events, but it doesn't take a diagnosis to mean that someone um, could do something like this or could experience those feelings. So paying attention and being a good listener, I think, make a big difference. Um, and like I said, if you notice that when you say something like, just go out on a walk, it'll make you stop being depressed. If, if that doesn't work, which I'm just going to tell you, it probably won't. Like, I can tell you how many times that's been said to me it, vaguely and, um, and the percentage of times that it's worked, which is zero, zero percent of the time it's worked. So, um, that's just not the answer for me. So, um, please, uh, be gentle with people. Please, uh, give people, um, if you can, an opportunity to listen, uh, or listen to them, an opportunity to talk about their experience without judgment. Um, if you do believe that someone is unsafe, um, there are ways all around the world that you can get help for this person, um, whether they want to or not. Um, but keep in mind that if someone doesn't react well to this way that they don't want, that that is not a necessarily surprising way. But, um, you know, I know uh, where I'm at, uh, my, um, my doctors and um, my spouse and my family all um, can, um, uh, like, involuntarily commit me or something like that if I am showing signs that I am unsafe and that I, I might do something to myself. Um, it's never the place that we want to end up, obviously. Um, it's never something that's fun. It's not something that, you know, I, I think that anyone would like wish on someone. But if you believe that someone is truly unsafe, um, sometimes you do have to step in and that's a place that no one really wants to be. So if we can, we can step in earlier and, and just try to listen and say, hey, there's some resources out there. Um, and uh, good ways to find resources is to just go on the internet and start start looking up ways where like, you know, different different places that, that might take people in, short term, long term. You know, there's um, inpatient, which is usually a week or two. Um, there's residentials that are uh, uh, a month long to a couple months long. Uh, there's PHP, which is a partial hospitalization program. Um, and this is just for uh, the US. I'm not quite sure if they're called something different or there are different avenues. You know, it's not like 
if someone is in this position, they're going to be in this position every day for the rest of their life and they're going to have to be committed and like what we see is like, you know, a psych ward that's, you know, that is the rest of their life. It doesn't necessarily and usually does not mean that. Um, it's just about getting someone through this difficult time and giving them some tools to help them along. I know insurance and costs are all big factors of that. Like I said, there are a ton of free resources because we want to prevent this as much as possible. Um, if you are having these prob these these thoughts, these um, issues, um, talking to someone is absolutely going to um, more times than not make you feel better. Um, finding a trusted friend, um, finding a, a confidant, you know, that you can talk to and say like, I'm really just struggling right now. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this period of time in my life. Um, and feeling like you can talk to them freely um, does save lives. And um, it doesn't mean that uh, it, you know, can prevent all bad things from happening to you. But it, you know, because life is hard, like life is hard, no matter how you go about it, life is going to end up getting hard, or it's going to stay hard. Um, so I feel like if we, uh, and I'm probably rambling at this point, I do apologize. But, you know, I am very passionate about this subject. And I really think that, um, that on the side of people who don't experience uh, suicidal ideations, I do believe that we can do better um, in general by listening more. And then I think that for people who do exist with these um, suicidal ideations and thoughts, I think that we can do better by asking for help, um, trying to find resources for help, um, and not, and, and just taking an inventory of um, who we have to talk to. You know, some people will say, take an inventory of everything you have to live for. Well, sometimes when you're super depressed, that list is barren. And, or like you are living for someone else and then maybe that person breaks up with you or something like that. And then all of a sudden, well, you don't have anything to live for anymore because that, that was the one person on your list. So building... Um, just having resources of um, people that you can talk to about hard subjects has been life-changing for me. I can speak personally to that. Um, and then finding places where I, I wasn't the only one who was feeling these feelings. You Now, some people have this idea that if you put people who deal with depression or deal with um, mental illness together that it will just, you know, everyone will just get crazier or whatever. But really, a lot of it is us helping each other out and helping each other through it. Because like, let's say me and my friend both have a mental illness. And like, maybe um, I'm doing all right right now, but they're going through a hard time. Well, I can use my experience with hard times to talk to them, and listen to them. And then when I, when the situation flips and I'm going through a hard time and they're doing okay, you know, we can, you know, bounce ideas off each other. It's also important that we don't just have each other, that we have other resources. So this is a month that I really wish didn't exist for the sole purpose that suicide did not exist. You know, it just did, did, doesn't. Um, I just wish that it wasn't an issue but it exists because it's incredibly important for us to know that there is support out there, there is love out there, um, and there are so many people who would rather see you succeed and live than anything else, no matter what is going on with you, no matter the reason why you feel like this is your solution. Um, I can almost guarantee you that this is not a solution to any of your problems. And um, it's just gonna, it's gonna create more problems um, for you, for the people you love. And um, do I forget that myself sometimes? Yeah, I do. And I, I wish I didn't. I wish I could come and talk to you and say, I'm fixed and I never, I'm never gonna feel this way again.
but the likelihood, given my history, it's it's pretty unlikely that that's my truth. And um, but I know, I know, uh, I have more tools now than I ever have, and um, sticking with all of that has made a huge difference. But I also have fail safes. I have people who will, if if you know, if I'm not. If I'm in a bad place and I'm not contacting them, you know, once a week or, you know, whatever, you know, we establish, like, they know to check in on me. They know to, to do more, uh, you know, a little bit more like, hey, like, haven't heard from you. You know, what's going on and all that stuff um, because they want me to be safe. They care about me and they love me. Um, and it doesn't take a, a decades long relationship to build love. Uh, for someone and care about their safety. So um, there are also um, tons of uh, uh, groups. Uh, I'm trying to think of like any of the ones that I've, I've, I've talked to and been to, uh, uh, but like there are groups for people who are um, uh, community uh, out outreach groups that are for people who are struggling with this. Um, I'm sure the more uh, the more metropolitan your area, the more resources you're going to have available. But 988 um, is always there if you truly think that you are in danger um, or you are a danger to someone else. 911 is always there, um, and they will they will put you in, in uh, like an uh, IBC uh, or involuntarily committed 72 hour hold in the U.S. Um, and sometimes that's what people need to get out of that headspace. Sometimes people need more time. Sometimes people need less time, but you are still in the wherever you are for 72 hours. Um, but uh, I say all this not to scare anyone and not to provoke anyone to call a code on someone uh, just because they're going through a hard time. I'm saying that like, that's an absolute fail safe. Um, but uh, there are many steps that go into um, things being really bad. And um, we can start being better by just bit by bit listening to people. Um, if you know someone is going through a hard time, just checking in on them can make the difference, um, can make a difference entirely. Just calling someone, texting someone, reaching out to someone, you know, you see them post a, a, a something on Facebook and you're like, this doesn't sound good. Let me just check in on them and see if they're doing okay. And that can make a big difference and can save someone's life. And um, I can't count the times in my life where someone just asking me how I'm doing and I'm like, oh, I'm fucking great. And an hour later, we're on the phone and we're we're laughing and I'd forget that I ever, ever felt bad in my whole life. Like that's, that's how dramatic of a change, just someone listening and laughing with you can feel. Um, if you are young and you struggle with these feelings, um, you don't feel safe talking to your parents, the, the hotline is there for you as well. Um, if you are LGBTQ plus, they, uh, the line has, 98 has a, um, LGBTQ plus specific line. Um, so please know that these are um, outlets and um, tools available for you. And I really hope that this month just brings you more resources for if you have a bad day. Actually, I should say for when you have a bad day because those bad days do happen. It's okay to acknowledge that they do happen, but it doesn't mean that it has to end in something way worse. It can be a bad day and it can resolve and you can feel better. You can feel more connected to the people around you. Um, so uh, I won't say happy, but this Suicide uh, Prevention and Awareness Month, um, please know that you're not alone. You're not alone because I'm right there with you, just trying to get through every day. And if we have each other, 
you know that's a step in the right direction. So please take care of yourself. Please take care of the people around you the best you can. But also, if um, you are not in control of anyone but yourself, unfortunately, and that's a, a really hard truth that we have to face. So um, I hope that this uh, this video finds you well and uh, sending you nothing but love.